Welcome to the machine familiarization video for the PC2000-11. This video will review the key features located throughout the machine. The goal is to familiarize you with the use, operation, or maintenance of the components and systems that make this a performance-oriented machine. Let's get started. The stairway leading to the machinery platform is hydraulically operated. The switch box for controlling the stairway is located on the handrail, to the left of the operator's cab. A chain lock can be engaged, preventing the stowed stairway from drifting down when the engine is stopped for extended periods. The control system will only operate if the lock lever is down inside the cab. Press and hold the lowering switch to lower the stairway. Start the engine, then press and hold the raising switch to raise the stairway. A step light with a 90 second timer is located on the switch box and at ground level on the lowered stairway. A work light can be powered on for performing maintenance in the dark. The machine controls will not operate if the stairway is not properly stowed. A secondary exit is located beneath the walkway to the left of the operator's cab. It can be used in times of emergency. Carefully raise the cover and release the rope ladder so it extends to the ground. Carefully climb down the ladder, ensuring that you use three points of contact at all times. The air conditioning filters are located at the entrance to the operator's cab. This includes the recirculation filters and the fresh air filters. Beneath the operator's cab, there is a walkway leading to the entry door for the cab riser. Notice the condenser for the upper and the lower air conditioning units. On the side of the cabinet, there is an inspection hole for viewing the refrigerant charge on the receiver dryers. Below the condenser cabinet is the installation for the system operating lamp, the battery isolator, and the starter isolator. Do not engage the battery isolator until the green system operating lamp stops illuminating. The battery isolator can be engaged and locked to disconnect battery electrical power from the machine. The starter isolator can be engaged and locked to prevent the engine from being started. These isolators are usually locked during machine maintenance. To the left of the isolator installation is the battery relay and heater relay installation. Notice the circuit breakers. They will open during moments of excess current flow. Push the circuit breaker to reset it. Let's enter the cab riser compartment beneath the operator's cab. There is a light switch in the upper left corner of the compartment. On the left wall of the compartment is the fuse box and circuit breaker installation. Fuses may occasionally require replacement. Circuit breakers may need to be reset occasionally, but repetitive failure should be investigated. Notice the four toggle switches in the upper left corner. During moments of electrical failure, these switches can restore temporary power to move the machine to a place where service can be performed. The two pump drive switches makes it possible to perform hydraulic control functions for a short period of time when there is a failure in the electronic pump control system. The swing brake cancel switch makes it possible to perform swing operations for a short period of time, even when there is a problem in the swing brake electric system. The lock lever cancel switch makes it possible to temporarily control the machine when the control levers have been disabled. The emergency engine stop switches are located outside the power module, one at the front and one at the rear of the power module. Push the emergency engine stop switch and its indicator lamp will illuminate green. Twisting the stop switch in the clockwise direction will re-enable normal engine operation and the indicator lamp will stop illuminating. Two additional stop switches are located at ground level, one below the right rear revolving frame and one attached to the stairway frame. These switches stop the engine by pulling on a cord. An indicator lamp illuminates when this happens. Pull the cord a second time to re-enable engine operation. There are two valves located at ground level for draining water and sediment from the bottom of the fuel tank. Position an appropriate container to catch the drained fluid. Then open the valve closest to the drain. Open the second valve located at the bottom of the fuel tank to drain water and sediment. Close the valves in reverse order when the operation is complete. The machine also has an emergency fuel cutoff valve. The valve is located beneath the right front revolving frame. The valve can be actuated in two locations, one at ground level near the right front corner of the machine. 
The other location is just above, located at the handrail for the walkway. A service center streamlines the drain and fill process for fluids. It can be raised and lowered easily, using controls located at ground level. The control panel is equipped for draining and filling the front and rear swing cases. The PTO case, hydraulic oil, coolant, engine oil, fuel, and grease. The grease lamp eliminates red when the system has become full. Stop the delivery of the grease when the system is filled. Use the grease switch to release pressure from the supply hose before removing it from the service center. The service center has a lock-unlock switch in the operator's cab. The lever lock must also be down and the key switch on for lowering. The engine must be running to raise the service center. The machine controls will not function if the service center is not stowed properly. An automatic grease lubrication system increases production and lowers maintenance cost. It also extends the life of the machine by ensuring that all components receive the proper amount of lubrication. The grease storage drum is located beneath the right side of the revolving frame. Above, on the walkway of the machine, the grease pump and motor is located. Grease flow of the lubrication points is actuated automatically using onboard computer system. The grease is injected on a time schedule while the machine is working, ensuring that the grease is fully distributed throughout each lubrication point. The system can be switched to manual operation to grease a small number of hand lubricated joints on the machine. This concludes the machine familiarization video for the PC2000-11 mining shovel excavator. For additional information, please reference the operation and maintenance manual or contact your local distributor. You may also visit us at www.